Um, because that's a big lesson I learned is how how much people don't allow themselves to enjoy what they have. They instead focus on things that just ge genuinely don't matter. Yeah, I think for me too, I learned a powerful tool to deal with overwhelm because for me, there's so much responsibility we've got, you know, with City Awakening, our church not-for-profit movement we're doing. Um, and for me, as you know, I like to control outcomes. I like to force things a bit along, control outcomes, had this and the wealth club and other different things I've been involved in. But the way I got to the way I got through that 24 hours, because honestly, that was the most terrifying 24 hours I've had since I can remember. And every minute felt like an eternity. And the way I really dealt with that in the end was very simple. I I went back to basic Buddhist mindfulness and I thought and, and I realized that there's always a beginning and an end to everything, you know, and everything ends. So all I was sitting there at the result thinking, I have three more hours and then I'll be on in the taxi. So my next mission is to spend the next three hours and manage to get through this okay, which I did. Step two was to get to the airport, which would take me one hour and 10 minutes. Step three was to, um, was to get through the airport lounge and I broke everything up into steps. And every time a step finished, I congratulated myself on the achievement. And the biggest thing I learned with overwhelm is to break up what seems an insurmountable series of tasks into steps and, and to acknowledge achievements. And William, who's here, my son, would know what I mean. We'd be having regular meetings on awakening stuff and stuff we do on clearing the etheric body and self-healing. And every day when we have a meeting, we acknowledge the achievements and we map out what we've done for the last few days. And then often we're amazed. So every day I go back over my achievements of the previous days and I commend what I've achieved. I look at where I can improve and I map everything out into a plan, into a blueprint. And then when I see there's too many tasks for me to do, there really genuinely is, I ask who can do this for me. And then I let go and allow systems and process to take over rather than force it. I let go. And even this morning, I had a powerful lesson when I woke up at 3.30, I'm seeing all these things to be done clearly, crystal clear. I then start to think, how am I going to do that? And as I was doing that, my head started to scramble. So I let go again and I just let go and I saw the thing and didn't think anything more of it. Six hours later, I'm talking to Grace and she and so and and, and her and um Jack had already come up with a plan and already actioning the very thing I'd been seeing. It was all it would have been taken care of for me. And I'm like, wow. So it was another lesson about overwhelm, letting things take its process. And it's like right now we're in winter in Australia. I mean, some of you may remember at one stage was summer. It seems like a distant memory now, but at one stage it was blooming hot and we were all swimming. Now it's cold. In three months' time, it'll be slightly warmer again. In six months' time, it's going to be hot again and we'll be swimming. So everything ends. And it's really shown me something about the meaninglessness of what we do. So we make it meaningful and we just know it will end and we become as attached. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, so those are pretty much our lessons if we were going to summarise it, but... Next point, before we actually start going into the education, we had planned like what we learned ourselves through of how to cope with anxiety and mental health and all of these other challenges that people go through. While you were in this state, what problems did it actually make you realize um, that people face in today's world? Because obviously it highlighted what problems we were facing ourselves in those moments. But what did you realize um, other people go through based on your own experience and most likely what people listening to this are going through. If this is why you wanted to do this webinar and I, and I think it's good to remind you, Ed, you said to me, the reason you wanted to speak was you said you really appreciate the opportunities you've been given, the fact that you had access to this John Thompson and through having parents who could help you, you were able to get tools to deal with it. But you said, how many people, Dad, don't have this opportunity? And so for me, I think people suffer... And they think they're all on their own because in the Western world, we're not very tribal. You know, we live in our houses on our own. We tend to stay away and we, and we, we get used to trying to deal with things on our own and feel tough. Whereas in tribal communities, as an, a good example is raising children. Now in a tribal community like the Philippines or Aboriginals, the tribes involved in raising the kid, you know, like you guys, Grace's mom got very involved because Filipino, more tribal culture in the West, Oh, no, your job, your parents, you do it. So suddenly the insurmountable task of raising children falls upon one or two people. And we've lost our ability to be tribal, community, and bonding together. So for, I think people suffer a lot from that because I think we're meant to be supportive. We're meant to be tribal. We're meant to work together as men, as women, and support each other. 
So to me, just on the pure theory of how psychology works, I think people go through a lot of suffering. I think people feel it on their own. A lot of people have been reporting their heads going crazy, 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 crazy. Um, whereas then you find out that many other people are going through this and then you feel shame about that. Or, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll share this openly. When I went through my mental health work, big breakdown 23 years ago, and as you know, one of the things with me, I've got no problem being pretty honest, but I remember sitting there terrified with my psychotherapist. It took me six weeks to, to build myself up the courage to tell him my deepest, darkest, dirtiest, shameful sin. And finally, I said, there's something I want to talk to you about, which I need some help with, because honestly, I just said, it's eating me up and I don't feel I can ever be forgiven for it. And he goes, okay. And he obviously was big. And I said, I secretly masturbate at night. And he looks at me and goes, okay, yeah. And I said, no, you didn't hear me. I masturbate at night and have sexual thoughts. And he goes, yeah, you're, you and 99% other men. And I said, don't make me feel better. You know, I know that's wrong. And he goes, no, I'm serious. He goes, where did you get that idea? And I go, really? So, uh, so it's normal. He goes, it's very normal. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and in that moment, I just felt this big relief. I thought, oh, thank goodness, because mum always said it was really dirty and my church did. Oh, okay. Now, I had other stuff to work through, but that's just one idea, you know, example. And in this whole situation that I think a lot of people are experiencing things that they feel they're on their own or suffering to cope with a change with what's happened in the world and with COVID and are too, on a way, too scared to admit how much you're struggling with all the change and the fear of the future. Like imagine you're a farmer or imagine you're just an Australian who's got a retirement fund of security. You're hearing about recession. You're looking at your future. You're older. I mean, you'd be shitting yourself, you know? So. Mm, that's for sure. And out of curiosity, because we, I got saw a comment that I used to feel like I was on my own until I started my healing journey. Um, how many of you guys listening to this resonate with what Warren was saying about problems that you may be facing, like whether you feel alone in this or anything? Um, anyone relate to what was just said there? Like just raise your hand or type a Y. Yeah, William, you have, I mean... I definitely felt like that in the moment. It felt like I was all alone with my mental health. Like when I felt like I was living in a mental asylum, but then just even just knowing that James and you were going through it in that moment too, just knowing that there's actually other people going through it with me kind of relieved me a bit. And even just listening that other people go through it as well. And when I hear that it's more normal, that definitely helped me a lot. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few people who resonate with what you just said there. Um, but Anyway, to move forward, are you ready to get into the actual education that we had yeah. and the lessons that we learned? Yeah, just 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 share them. Let's just summarize. We don't need to do a big, long two-hour thing, but let's just, you know, just go through the point. Just go through your lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what we wanted to go through today was actually share the lessons that we learned because the state that we were in when we felt like we were trapped in a mental asylum, I know that I realize a lot of people actually feel like that where even if it's not mentally, people feel like they're trapped in a lifestyle or they feel like they're trapped in, the re in a reality they can't escape. A lot of people also feel like they've lost com complete control, like especially in a situation like COVID and now with this whole pharma law being passed, people now feel like they've lost complete control over um, something that they had before. And that's what creates a lot of anxiety, fear, scarcity and stuff for the future, um, as we were taught by a psychologist. So um what we wanted to do was just share our own. Firstly, what we'll do is we'll go through seven principles that I kind of learned through this experience that I think can relate to a lot of you. But like I said, take what you will and um, which parts relate to you. It may help you, it may not, but um, I think you'll like it. And the second part that we'll go through is eight practical steps that you can actually follow to overcome anxiety or even if it's not anxiety, if it's just holding on to emotions, if it's just fear or anything like that, eight steps that you can apply to overcome and what we personally did while we were in that state to make it back home to our room, um, even though we were high as a kite going through the airport and feeling like we were trapped in a mental asylum. So hopefully this helps. I won't spend too much time on it. I'll summarize it. Um, if we need to go longer, we'll run a separate training for that or maybe turn it into a blog and send it out to everyone in writing or in a video. But um, this is more going to be an overview, overview and summary. So I'll share my perspective on the seven principles um, to deal with this stuff. And then if you have anything to add, Warren, after I finish, feel free. Um, 
My first principle for what I learned during the whole experience was being comfortable losing control. That's number one. Whenever there's a situation you've got yourself into or you feel like you've got yourself into, um, either whether it's a traumatic thing, whether it's um, something that governments have put or anyone else, or whether you've found yourself like, number one, you have to be comfortable losing control. Looking back on the whole experience, the reason why I was so panicking and paranoid um, that I was going to be trapped in a mental asylum and I'd be have to, I'd be permanently brain damaged just because I was trying to control something that I couldn't, that I should have just let go and just enjoy the experience. I was trying so hard to control it when I, when I couldn't. So how many people do you see in today's world, especially people going through mental health challenges who try to control something that they actually can't? Um, there's some things that are supernatural and some things that are, um, more out of your control so just understand what's in your control and what's not and then be comfortable letting go it, it's easier said than done so um if you do struggle letting go of control then you also want to make sure you have the right people around you which is going to be another principle i'll get into at the end so that's number one be comfortable losing control number two recognize what's causing your fear or anxiety and face it head on rather than trying to hide or deny from it so um, what I mean by that is I thought the drug was causing my fear and I thought um, my emotions were causing my fear and anxiety in that moment. But in reality, the real root of the problem that I was facing was just my the feeling of complete loss of control and the fear of being brain damaged. So as soon as I realized the whole thing that was causing my anxiety and making me feel heightened emotions was the that I lost control and that's the real thing I was fearing was my loss of control I instantly calmed down so after I recognized that was the actual cause of my problem then I faced it let go and noticed myself being a lot more calm so if you are going through any if you're feeling any emotions like fear anxiety or anything like that separate the emotions from the actual problem that you're facing so you may feel anxious but that anxiety would have to be coming from somewhere. So identify what it is, dig deep and find out what is actually causing your emotions. And then rather than hide it or let yourself feel anxious, um, identify it and then work on it from there. Number three, realize that nothing lasts forever. That was the other thing too, which I realized. Um, I, I thought the whole thing would last forever. So that was another thing that was causing a lot of anxiety for me was that I thought this would be forever. And I thought I would be, have to be put in a mental asylum trapped in a room with my thoughts so as soon as I realized that this is actually normal and that when you take cannabis this actually happens like when you overdose this is a normal thing that happens um, and that it wasn't going to be forever I also calmed down so just knowing it wouldn't last forever and I know Warren briefly touched on it before that um, summer passed like three months ago and we forget it it just feels like a distant memory so same thing with any problems you face I'm sure if you sit down and look at problems that you had in your in your life, you probably at the time thought they'd never end. Like maybe if you went through a heartbreak, if you went through health challenges, at the time you would have thought it would never end. But you look back on it now and realize that it actually helped you grow or, or something like that. So yeah. if you are going through challenges now, just remember that, that it won't last. And as long as you take action, you'll get through it. Principle four is following on from nothing lasts forever. But principle four is focus on enjoying the moment and creating worthwhile experiences because knowing that nothing lasts forever rather than let, holding on to the problem that you're facing just allow yourself to enjoy the moment and create experiences from it and I know that kind of sounds a bit fluffy or spiritual whatever you want to call it but that's just the reality if you just let yourself enjoy the experience rather than focusing on the future or something or focusing on potential problems then um that's what you want to do a good example of this to give a more practical sense if if you're feeling anxious about losing a relationship like a loved one let's say um i know a lot of people who are in relationships just um even they don't allow themselves to fully enjoy it because they um are worried about losing their partner or something like that and they fear the worst but instead rather than thinking about that the reality is the relationship is never going to last forever and just if you can accept that um, it might last longer than you think it might last shorter but rather than thinking about the future just let yourself enjoy that experience and um, for me that's what I had to do in that moment just enjoy it and let myself enjoy the trip 